Well, we just got quite a dumping. Uh, I have all the toys, my snowblower, but it took me two and a half hours this morning to clear all the snow. And it's so pretty now, but it's a lot of work. February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Not many people, just a few people shoveling snow. I'm going to try and do a video for you um, that is really for beginners um, on, on perfecting your centering and pulling a wall. Um, somebody requested this, um, so I'm assuming they're a beginner, um, but um, I'm going to do this like you don't know how to throw and you want to pull and center a piece, you know, pull a wall to center a piece of clay. And it's so easy for us, but when you first start, I know how difficult it is because I taught classes for a long time. But anyway, we're going to try it and see whether this helps you. But I wanted to just give you a little information on the nature of the clay because clay is basically a really thick liquid because if you squeeze it it flows out of your hands it'll squeeze through your fingers um, so we've got to think about that when we're doing stuff to it by pressuring our hands on a spinning piece of clay because it will flow where we push it um, so when I position my fingers if I put my fingers totally square on it and press hard I'm simply going to push through the clay wall um, but if I actually angle my fingers and I want the clay to get taller and I angle them at 45 degrees, the clay will actually push uh, through my fingers and just go over the top of my fingertips as it's spinning and gets, you know, trying to squeeze out of my fingertips basically and go, go up. So think about how you're positioning your fingers. It can be fingertips, it can be the knuckle, it can be your palm. I mean, any way you're pushing the clay basically, but you've got to remember that it's a liquid, a very thick liquid, and it's simply squeezing out like a toothpaste tube where you wanna push it to go. And the other thing is making sure that you're totally secure in your wheel so that you have rigidity in your position and your body um, and you're not going to wobble because if you wobble the clay will wobble so if you are a static rigid form and your hands are solidly against your waist and on your thigh basically um, the clay can't push you it weighs one pound and you weigh 120 pounds whatever you weigh i wish <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, you you just have to kind of think about all these things. So I'm going to talk about that while I'm doing the throwing. Um, and if you have any questions, post them in the comments. Um, but this one is really to try and help you perfect pulling a wall. So it'll just be small cylinders and maybe one larger bowl. But um, but hopefully hopefully this will help some of you. Okay, so... When you get on a wheel, you've got to make sure the wheel head is clean. So get all the clay off it and use a sponge that still is damp, but it contained a bit of water. And then you rub it over the surface and it dampens the wheel head so that your clay will stick to the surface. It won't stick to a, d a dusty surface very easily. My wheel is solid against a wall. And if you don't have much strength, you better get yourself next to a wall because it takes a lot of strength to actually center a piece of clay. Um, my chair is pulled right up. You can't see it in the picture actually, but my chair is pulled right up to the wheel, so it's touching the wheel. And my body, my thighs, and my groin are wrapped right around the, the splash pan. So I'm right there. And the height of my body is level. You know, my waistband is just a touch above the wheel head. So basically I'm really tucked in here close. So when I lean forward, my head is right over the top of my hands and and, and that gives my body a little easier because I just relax and I slump over the over the piece of clay so I'm not standing back and trying to center which is put more pressure on your arms then to do it but if I just do it like this my slump all the way to my body is on my hands so that makes it easy it's really kind of a you don't have to press as hard um, so those are the basic things for positioning your body and your elbow 
if you can get a wall there, should be able to put it right on the center there and the lump of clay will be spinning in your hand while your elbow is touching the wall. If you don't have a wall, then basically uh, you're gonna have to rely on the strength of your arms to do this. And you know, I've seen people who are very slight looking center clay quite easily. Even kids can do it. Um, but anyway, we've got a damp wheel head and our body is positioned really well. These pieces of clay are just under one pound. So I'm going to do that to it to round it off on the bottom. But if you're a beginner, make sure your hands are dry, bang it into a ball. Because if you start with a square, like I'm used to throwing, because I you know, can do this easily. Um, for me, I put a lot of pressure on and a square will go into a round. But if you are a beginner and you don't have a lot of strength, you haven't done this before, you should make sure it's like a tennis ball, just completely round. And you don't have to throw it down, it's a damp wheel head, place it down and just do that, push it around, turn the wheel, push it down. <coughs> it really, it's, you know, you can lift this up now, it's stuck to the wheel head. Um, and uh, just uh, as I mentioned, wheels come with bats, and sometimes the bats wobble. This one doesn't at all. So if you have a, a studio where you are renting or you've actually got, you're in classes, make sure you get a bat that doesn't, if you move it like that, it doesn't go click, 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 because that means the bat pins are loose and that will put you off when you're throwing too. Make sure it's completely level so it doesn't go up and down because that'll put you off too. So in other words, we want life to be perfect. And that's always a good thing. But anyway, um, I have a brick under my leg, my right foot, no, my left foot, I have a brick underneath it. So it lifts my knee a little higher off the ground. So my knee level is just a bit taller than the splash pan. Um, and that's because if you do this a lot, you can get nerve damage in your forearms. And it also helps because you can wedge your, um, your elbow into your leg if you can't do it to the wall and all that. So, so because not everybody has a wall, I'm gonna use my leg. All right, now, first thing you do, you place it down, it's stuck. You dribble water on it, and you just put your top hand on it and squeeze it down, just to make sure it really is stuck to there. When you come to center this piece of clay, make sure both hands are completely wet. And I do it, some people do it like this, I do it like that. I would like to see half the ball of clay spinning while my hand's covering the other half. This hand is actually, cleaning the wheel head as I'm pressing it down. So it's not halfway up in the air. It, the, that bit of my hand is on the wheel head and that's why I need to keep it wet because it'll burn if you don't. <coughs> and it's just spinning, touching the clay, not pressuring it yet at the moment. The other hand, I put my thumbs are wrapped around the back like that. And my other finger can be just between my fingers like that. So I'm positioned like that. So these three fingers go with my forefinger, thumbs around there. So that helps to make my arms pull together um, as, and, and my hands are working as one. So what happens? The top hand comes in, put some pressure down. The side hand comes in and puts some pressure on as well. And if your arms are solid against your body, it will go into a sort of center. And the speed is actually going medium to fast. So you can make it go really fast if you want to, but I always get, tend to go in with just about, just under half, uh, medium to three quarters, something like that. So it's off center, watch this. Top hand comes in, puts pressure down, and the side hand comes in just a second after and puts pressure sideways. So that was to make sure it's stuck to the wheel. This one's to kind of put pressure on to try and stop it wobbling. And your top hand, you should be able to see half the clay as it's spinning. So you're making a hockey puck. All right, Canadian thing. But, um, all right, so it's off center. Top hand comes in, side hand comes in, and you put some pressure on. Now, if you put too much pressure on with the top hand, it gets flat, and that's not a bad thing. If you put too much pressure on with your side hand, it gets tall. So what happens if you put pressure on with both at the same? It goes into center. And you let go slowly. And that's crucial. Letting go slowly is crucial. So we've got a soft lump of clay wobbling. Top hand comes in, side hand comes in, and you put pressure on equally, and it goes into center. If you want to try something called coning, and it's because it didn't go into center, 
you can make it form an ice cream cone by positioning your hands like that and then going for the complete wrap around like this and just squeeze your hands and it makes it get tall so you make an ice cream cone then when you put your hands in again when you put equal pressure it's now dry I've got to let go slowly get water on it and then go down and try and make equal pressure with left and top hand and make that hockey puck and that's it you can re-watch that part of this exercise many times and get used to knowing that off by heart so that you can actually make a hockey puck now when you have to put a hole in it make sure your fingers are really wet and don't put a big hole in straight away kind of feel it as it's going around you can feel with the sensitivity of your fingertip there's a point right where it's spinning around your fingertip equally and you find that point and you make a dimple fill that dimple with some water and you can make that dimple go a little bit more so that you can get enough water in there so when you want to get to the bottom now you put your hand back you put your finger in there and make sure this hand is wet and you push down to about a centimeter from the bottom and then when you're a centimeter from the bottom let go slowly to make sure it's not wobbling and if it's not wobbling the hands are both wet and you pull your finger towards your left palm and make sure your finger didn't rise up as you're doing that if you're making a coffee mug if you're making a bowl you can let it rise up and then I take my finger and place it right in the corner there so you can see that line I made it actually is there to actually um, give myself a position to actually move my finger feeling for that little fingernail edge and then pull that little bit of clay towards the center and you can even pull a little bit off if you want to just to make sure you're trying to put compression onto the center one of the common things with you as a beginner will be that you get s cracks and that's how to get rid of them all right so what happens, we've got a nice spinning piece of clay. Keep a sponge with you so you can dribble water so it goes inside and outside. Because if it doesn't, if you do it the inside and not on the outside, it's just gonna to stick to the outside fingers. So you want it equally wet. What happens if you just take two fingers and you go like that? It gets narrower. And that helps. Because if you actually want to pull the wall up, it's going to want to flare out because you will naturally not know the pressure at first and so you tend to put more pressure on with the inside fingers so I always start by making it narrower dribble water right over the center again and in the outside and now positioning the fingers what I'm talking about is if you put your fingers down like that which will be very difficult with these fingers because they have to go inside so I try to follow that shape that these fingers will be on the inside with my outside fingers so that they're actually this, there's let's say um, 90 degrees. If I go like that, I can get my fingers in easier and I can echo that with the outside fingers and then I can actually push them together. And the clay will come into this finger and because it's pressing in with some pressure, it will lift up over that finger, then over that finger and it's about a finger's width you know, higher up. So your fingers made it get a finger's width higher up it make the piece get taller by your fingers width so we're just positioning the fingers 45 degrees or let's even 30 degrees it's somewhere in that region and then you're going to find a point where the wall the foot the floor on the inside sets the distance you want these fingers to be touching the clay last as you pull the wall so if we start with your fingertips right on the wheel head here and your fingertips on this on the floor of the pot on the inside and you start putting pressure together you're going to basically push out with these fingers a little bit and it's going to make it get a bit wider but these fingers are going to catch that extra width and push it back up let's let's do a demo so nice and wet pressure with both inside and outside fingers and the, the clay is flowing over the top of my fingers one revolution to follow the wet spot and then when you get to the top you let go slowly and notice my fingers kind of come out these ones are just a touch higher but almost level and you've got a bit of clay there that you pull off that always happens 
It's the slurry formed on the surface. And it's still narrow because these fingers caught the piece last. And then these fingers are pushing up and it flows over those fingers. But then these fingers are coming up and it's flowing over those fingers on the outside. But if you do it like that, you're, you're level. It's not going to work. It's got to be just at an angle like that. So we'll do one more. And make sure it's nice and wet. And every revolution, you should be one finger width higher up. So we go in, pressure. Fingertips on the inside are just a touch higher. Fingertips on the outside are making sure it stays narrow by being the last fingers to touch that little level of clay as it spins through them. And you keep going until it gets dry. And it didn't get dry right to the top, so that was perfect. It meant that I actually had, and if it does that, just put your fingers back in there. This clay is quite soft. All right, um, so every revolution, you're drying the clay where you, where you touch it. So you've got to be the next level up for every revolution. So we go one, revolution two, revolution three, revolution four, revolution five, revolution. You can count and actually get it right to the top. So now we've got a pot that's the right height. Wooden tool. Make a little gouge there. And that defines the piece on the, on the bat so that you'll be able to cut through it easier. If you want to, I do this. You don't have to, this is optional. I just make a foot that's a little nice. I don't hardly have to trim these. I can sponge them when they come off the wheel and, and they would be fine. Now, your hand's gonna have to go inside. So wet your hand, it's nice and wet. Dribble a bit of water from your hand down in there and, and as narrow as you can make your fingers, push them to the bottom and where the rib touches the bottom, just start touching there with your fingertips. So I'm following the edge of the rib all the way up. And then when I've got to the top of the rib, I just lift the rib as well and come to the top. And that's it. And then you can take your rib, scrape all the water off. Use a sponge on a stick to get the water out of the inside. Now, throwing soft clay like this is really makes it, it makes it easy for centering. Throwing hard clay means you can get taller pieces, but it's harder to center. So when you're beginning, it's better to go for shorter pieces with soft clay because it's a little easier for you to do the centering. But I, my favorite clay is B-Mix 5, which centers really well and also lifts really easily. And do that all the way down. Um, <clears throat> it's nice and smooth. It's a perfect type cylinder, basically. Um, and somebody also asked me to destroy it. <laughs> so uh, let's see, what's the best way of doing this for you? They want me to cut it down so they can see the wall. And when it's this soft, it's a little bit hard because the clay collapse is easy but look you go down pull that across fold it over and there's the wall so it's pretty much the same thickness all the way up that little area there is where you saw a little bulging out and that's where i pushed it back in because that's a little thinner than this bit here but it's pretty much the same thickness all the way up and that's what you need to go for if it gets thin down here and it's thick up here that's when you start to get wobbles that are hard to get rid of so you've got to push that back in straight away <clears throat> that is basically centering and pulling a perfect wall you just have to you know do this a hundred times sorry about that <laughs> that's what I did I made a waterfall out of cylinders I put little slabs on this part so I had like a little pig's trough and I made um, a waterfall out of it um, when we were at high school. Anyway, okay, here's another angle for you. So top hand, side hand in. Let go slowly, it's still wobbling. Top hand, side hand. If it's, you feel like it's getting difficult, so you go a cone, and then you take your hand to the top, and you push down again. The wheel's going about medium to fast at the moment. Now I'm going to go for center, so my left hand is cleaning the bat because it's resting on the bat. My top hand is halfway 
over the entire ball of clay. It still has a tiny wobble there. So I'm gonna go back on, push in with my side hand, push down with my top hand and let go slowly. So that little clean spot is because my, these fingers are right on the bat, stopping the clay from squeezing out underneath my fingers. Okay, you need a dimple. Feel for that little bit and then press down, get some water before it starts drying. Fill it again, put some downward pressure, it dries again, but now you can fill it up with water. The, the faster you throw, the less you have to put more and more water on, but when you're learning, you're usually quite slow. So, so that is all to try to make it lubricated so I can go down and pull to the left hand without going back to get more water, because it's full of water. Now it's drying on the outside, I had to let go. And then I feel for that corner point, pull my finger towards the center, putting pressure on to the center, and then I pull a little bit off usually, put some water in again. You can do that twice if you want. Once is probably enough. And it puts pressure on to compress the clay towards the center to get rid of the potential for S cracks. Now I'm wetting it left and right. And here's what you can narrow it by just putting pressure on with your outside fingers. You don't need to do that once you get used to doing this, but that gives you a head start because it's already getting quite narrow. Now water on inside and outside, fingertips at that 45, 30 degree angle, pressure on and then come up the wall. One revolution, it's slowing the wheel down now. So every revolution I'm a little higher up so I can chase the wet spot starting to dry so I let go slowly put some water on go back to where, you, where it was that you were at and then continue that pull to the top and let go slowly now if you go fast enough we'll do this one a bit faster water on both inside and outside fingertips inside and this time I'm going to go fast enough so I don't let it dry out my thumb points are touching each other and I'm pulling up one revolution, one bit higher up. It's the one revolution and one finger height higher up that's very important because you're always on the wet spot. And then you let go slowly, put some fingertip right on the point of the top so you can compress that edge there. And that's usually what happens in the beginners, you get thin edges at the top. Okay, so we've got a height. That's all it is. All there is to it, he says. All right. We know, you know, it's hard. It was hard for me. It took me three months to learn how to throw. I was going in the pottery classroom several times a week just to learn that. All right. Greg Allen was my teacher. He's passed away now, but... And then my buddy was... Lynn Burton and Nick Shires, and we were learning pottery together in Penniston Grammar School in Penniston, Yorkshire. Okay, wet hand all the way down, make sure you've got some moisture on the inside wall. Hand goes back inside, as crunch it as tight as you can so you can get your hand in there, and then the metal rib is just to drag the water off. You don't want to leave water on your pot when you take it off the wheel because it will just collapse. And then you could just leave it like that. That's a nice shape mug. If you want to, you could put an extra ridge in there just to give yourself a tankard mug. It's called a tankard lip. That's one thing you can do to change the shape of your mug, give it some extra detail. Another thing you can do is put your hand in and give yourself a really big belly. Just inside fingers are simply pressing towards the rib and then coming back in now, putting pressure with the rib on it. So I can close it up a little bit at the top where the ridge is. And that gives me a nice curve on my shape. So when you get used to doing cylinders, you can start changing them. You can emphasize that edge a little bit more there. And then you'll develop a shape of a mug that you like yourself, that you might end up making for the next 50 years if you're like me. <laughs> Yeah, you, you you actually um, just get a favorite shape, I guess. I have lots of mugs that I make, but I have a favorite. Not this one. We 
There you go. And that's a mug, you know. So, enjoy playing. Um, make a hundred mugs. So I'm going to do some stuff that's, um, or I'm going to answer some questions. I'm going to preempt them, I guess. A lot of people are throwing on the wheel cheat. This is cheating. This is a bunch of scraps of clay that are actually just put together, no wedging. And I've seen students just throw a pot, collapses, just flop it all over and push it into a ball and start throwing again. They're never going to make, make a pot with that. <clears throat> If you're really advanced, I can get away with that, but it's because I have to do, play around with it a lot on the wheels. So I'm going to show you that now. This is not because I know you're going to cheat. It's just human nature. Um, you can wheel wedge. So this is what I'm going to do. It's called uh, cheating, <laughs> wheel wedging. All right, we got a lump of clay that wasn't wedged. You bang it down. The only trick is you have to be able to center. But anyway, cone it. Kind of tall. Then push it back down the way you center the clay. And there's an air bubble just popped out. And do it again. Another air bubble just popped out then. So I know I still got some air in there. And I'm gonna go flat. See, no more air bubbles. So this time it's actually a lump of clay without any air bubbles in it. And then you just center it as normal. I have done that three, four times sometimes to get rid of all the air bubbles. You do it until you don't, as you flatten it, you don't feel any air bubbles in it. If there's an air bubble in there, you have to cone it again. You have to push it back into a, a ice cream cone and basically put it flat again. And then you can feel it, see if any air bubbles pop out. If they don't, then you basically have a piece of clay that's, you know, fairly going to be easy to, to center so like this. But it's easier, I think to actually just put the clay aside and wedge it on a plaster slab for 60 turns, which is basically about one and a half minutes of wedging. So it's not long at all. So why cheat? It's like speeding in a car. I mean, most people speed a little bit, but you get there usually about 10, 15 seconds faster than you would have anyway. So what's the point? Take a chance for not for just so little gain. So it's better just to put those flops aside and actually just put, put aside about two, three minutes at the end of your session doing pottery just to wedge those pieces of clay up. And I don't let the clay get to big lumps if I ever have to do that. I very, very rarely wedge, but because I have a pug mill. But um, it doesn't take more than two or three minutes to wedge a piece of clay up. In about four, five, six pounds is the, the the most I would try wedging comfortably. Wow, you hear that rumbling, don't you? That's my wife upstairs. Jackie's doing something. There you go, sponge out. So we got another mug. There we go. Now, if you're using recycled clay or if you're using um, just clay that's been sitting around in the bag and it's sort of dried up a little bit in one part and not in the other kind of thing. So it's uneven. You need to do a, a little bit of wedging. Uh, I tend to throw clay right out of the bag um, because I've done it for so many years. I can just about cover anything just by pressing really hard on the wheel. But if you're a beginner, you really need to clean up your table area where you're going to wedge so that you've got no dirty, dry bits of clay. And then take your two pieces, because I've got two pieces here, and I'm not sure if they're the same consistency. One was nearer the opening of the bag, one was deeper inside, so they could be uneven. So you just want to give it some turns. And spiral wedging is takes one minute 
to one and a half minutes to do a block of clay. And I usually do about two to three pounds of clay, maybe up to six, depending on how strong I feel. Uh, this is about one and a half to two pounds of clay. So it's easy. And you just push it, pull back, push it, pull back. And you're not really, uh, you're pushing forward, but you're just pulling. We don't put any pressure on. So push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Push, pull. And you end up, it's called ram's head kind of wedging, basically. I always turn it around though and, and kind of change the position. So I'm, see how this hand is just doing this each time? It doesn't really do much. This one puts the pressure on and this one pulls it back. So push down, pull back, push down, pull back, push down, pull back, push down, pull back, push down, pull back. You don't want to spread it out like, you know, a great big slab of clay because that'll trap a piece of air in it. You're trying to even the clay by making it fold around into a big spiral and if there's any air bubbles they'll come out and this is why I actually turn the position a little bit and start there because I like to kind of change the spiral direction. We have big lumps of ice falling off the building today because it's actually starting to form up a bit. Anyway, pull back, push forward, pull back, push forward, but you do it together with your hands together, thumbs together. And you count 60 of these. So it's really one a second when you get good. Not big pushes where you're spreading the clay out, but just little pushes. So hand pull up, push down, pull up, push down, pull up, push down. And then turn it around every so often. And that is wedging. So that's one and a half pounds of clay, enough for two mugs or one big beer tankard. I don't think it's about one and a half. Do I have scale here? No, I don't. Anyway, that's preparation. If it's new clay right out of the bag, just bang them into balls. Cut it up in, if it's a 24 pound, 25 pound bag of clay, you cut it up into 24 blocks of clay, which is easy to do the math on that when you're dividing it up. And uh, then basically bang them all into balls. Okay, as a beginner, you cut your clay up out of the box and it's usually squared off a little bit. Um, and I center it right from this, you know, I, I put it on the wheel and I can do it. But I've had 50 years experience and I've got a lot of strep upper body strength that I can just, you know, pummel the clay into, into shape. Uh, but you, as a beginner, are going to have a terrible time if you put this on the wheel. And you're going to get disappointed and maybe even give up pottery. So what you do is you just break it into the piece the size that you want. And then you've got this really ugly little thing. Make sure you don't trap any air and you just carefully make it into a round ball. You're making sure you don't trap any air. That's the key. And then once you've got it rounded a bit, just paddle it with your hand to hand. It takes, what, did I just spend 30 seconds doing that? Basically, it's gonna make your life very easy. So do that to every squared loft little piece you cut off your block of clay before you start throwing. Don't do this with wet hands, do it with dry hands and just make sure all these little creases that you see like that don't have any air trapped underneath them by, you know, sort of when you paddle it from hand to hand. So all these little creases will disappear almost instantly as soon as you start spinning it on the clay. But you want to make sure there's no folds in there at all. And that just really makes your life easy.